Alice seekers be attentive. We are about to learn the compensatory regeneration in mammalian liver. But first of all, we will revise what is regeneration in first place and what is compensatory regeneration. So regeneration is the reactivation of development in post embryonic life to restore missing or damaged tissues. We know that most of the development occurs during the embryonic life, but regeneration is a special form of development and it occurs during the post embryonic life with what aim? With aim to restore missing or damaged tissues. There can be a number of ways in which regeneration can occur, but our uh, topic is the compensatory regeneration. In compensatory regeneration, what happens is that differentiated cells divide and form new cells that are also differentiated, which means that each cell produces similar cells to itself. There is no involvement of any kind of stem cells or there is no such de-differentiation of adult cells that occurs in other sorts epimorphosis such as it involves the de-differentiation of cells and I have covered a a whole complete lecture on epimorphosis which you will find in the playlist. So in compensatory regeneration, there is no involvement of stem cells or de-differentiation has no role in this. Each cell produces cells similar to itself and no mass of undifferentiated cell or tissues forms. This type of regeneration is the characteristic of human liver or mammalian liver. Here we have the compensatory regeneration. Here we can see that there is a differentiated cell and it is just dividing to form more differentiated cells of its sort in order to compensate the loss for this type of cell. This is what is called compensatory regeneration. So how do we study compensatory regeneration of liver? Well, the standard assay for liver regeneration is partial hepatectomy in which we just remove some of the lobes of or specific lobes of liver and the liver then regenerates itself. Although the removed lobe doesn't grow back, it is not the case that the lobe that we removed it will grow back, it is not going to happen. What happens is that the remaining lobe that we left and did not remove from body that enlarges to compensate for the loss of missing tissue and the amount of liver regenerated is equivalent to the amount of liver removed. Such uh, compensatory regeneration is the division of undifferentiated cells to recover the structure and function of any dead organ and it has been demonstrated in a zebrafish heart as well as well as in the mammalian liver. I know you are aware of the fact that there is no uh, going to be any de-differentiation of mature cells uh, of differentiated cells and there are, uh, so there is no formation of regeneration blastema in this case in case of compensatory regeneration. So what is the mechanism of this regeneration? Well, human liver, in case of human liver, there are two ways. The first way is that the mature liver cells, mature hepatocytes that do not usually divide, they start dividing and they compensate for the missing part. However, in some cases such as when the injury is severe or when the adult hepatocytes are just not able to regenerate uh, due to senescence or alcohol abuse or some disease, then in such case, our body has some uh, second line of defense and that is the population of hepatic progenitor cells. And these hepatic progenitor cells then perform the regeneration, the compensatory regeneration in human liver. In normal liver, uh, liver regeneration, five types of liver cells, hepatocytes, duct cells, fat storing, keto cells, endothelial cells and for macrophages, all they begin to divide to produce more of themselves. Each cell type is going to produce uh, the same type of cell that it is. For example, endothelial cells are going to produce endothelial cells, super macrophages are going to make super macrophages and duct cells are going to make duct cells and so on. So each uh, type retains its cellular identity and the liver retains its ability to synthesize the liver specific enzymes that are necessary for glucose regulation, toxin re degradation, bile synthesis, albumin production and other hepatic functions. Even as it regenerates itself. This is why this had to be uh, done this way. If the liver cells had gone de-differentiation, then who would come at their place to perform all these vital functions that liver performs? That is why we cannot afford to have other kinds of regeneration in liver in which the liver cell 
have to redifferentiate because then there will not be possibility of the performance of these functions that liver performs and without which our existence our life is not possible now the question that we have is what causes the liver cells uh, to regenerate the liver what is the reason behind this how the liver gets to know that its part has been removed and it has to undergo regeneration well our result of research shows that there are probably several different retentive pathways however end result of this pathways is that the expression of genes that are responsible for the functions of the differentiated mature liver cells those genes are down regulated their expression is reduced but not fully suppressed and at the same time the cells uh, the genes that commit a cell to mitosis those genes are upregulated and their expression is increased so simultaneously cell is performing its own function in the liver as well as it is dividing in order to compensate for the loss of the liver there are a number of ways in which the signal that liver has injured or has been removed gets to cause the regeneration the removal or injury of liver is sent through blood stream and some liver specific factors are lost while other increase such as the bile acids and gut lipopolysaccharides they are lost when liver is cut or removed or injured these lipopolysaccharides activate uh, some non hepatocytes to secrete paracrine factors and those paracrine factors allow the remaining hepatocyte to reenter the cell cycle and thus when these hepatocyte reenter the cell cycle they are going to compensate for the lost cells or the lost portion additionally the kupfer cells secrete interleukin 6 or il6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha and this factor is usually involved in activating the adult immune system but here it is also involved in compensatory regeneration and also the still eight cells secrete paracrine factor hgf or scatter factor which we can say the hepatocyte growth factor as well as tgf beta in addition to these factors specialized blood vessels of liver also produce hgf as well as a factor called wnt2 so this is what is going to make the liver undergo regeneration there is something amazing however that hepatocytes when they are still connected to one another in an epithelium they do not respond to the hgf or hepatocyte growth factor so it is only going to happen when a liver part is removed or when the liver is injured or similar situation hepatocytes activate cmat which is a receptor for agf within an hour of partial liver removal or hepatectomy hepatectomy and if we block the cmat by or the if the cells itself block cmat by rna interference or knockout then the it blocks the liver regeneration then liver regeneration is not possible if the receptors for agf are blocked then definitely agf is not going to work and if agf is not going to work then regeneration is not going to happen the trauma of partial hepatectomy may activate metalloproteinases that digest the extracellular matrix now what this does is that it separates the cells when the cells are separate then uh, the hgf is able to bind to its receptors the cmat that is why agf only works when there is some injury or some trauma to liver these enzyme may also cleave agf to its active form it is also possible that agf is released in its inactive form and that the active form is produced when there is injury however in case of a uh, what you can say intact liver neither are neither of the two requirements are present first requirement was that uh, the hepatocyte 
should be separate in order for HCF to act on them. And second is that H, uh, HCF needs to be activated. And both of these things, the separation of cells and the activation of HCF is occurring only when there is some trauma to the liver. So together the factors that are produced by endothelial cells, the Kupfer cells, the stellate cells, these allow the hepatocyte to divide by preventing apoptosis and activating cyclins D and E and depressing cyclin inhibitors such as P7. Cyclins are definitely some other chemicals which are uh, tail of which we are not going to discuss in this lecture. Now when the liver reaches its appropriate size, it stops growing. But we do not know why liver stops growing when it reaches the appropriate size. However, there is some there are some clues, and these clues come from the parabiosis experiments in which circulatory system of two rats are uh, surgically joined, and then partial removal of liver in one of the two joined rats causes others liver to enlarge. It means it uh, has to do something with the factors that are present in blood or that are circulated via blood through the body that are necessary for establishing the size of liver. In 2006, it was proposed by researchers that these factors are bile acids and that are uh, these factors are the bile acids that are secreted by liver and these positively regulate hepatocyte growth. It means that when partial removal of liver stimulates the release of bile acid into blood. These bile acids are the factors that are received by hepatocytes and it activates the FXR transcription factor which then promotes cell division. Mice without functional FXR protein cannot regenerate their livers. It also strengthens that the factor that is involved in determining the size of liver are the bile acids. However, we are yet to discover the molecular mechanism that is behind all this, uh, the interaction between various factors uh, and how they first initiate or begin the regeneration process and then how they stop the regeneration process when the liver size reaches the appropriate value. This ability of human livers to regenerate is what gives us opportunity to transplant liver from a part of liver from a suitable donor, a suitable living donor into the person whose liver is not functioning. So that part of liver that is being transplanted to the diseased person, it will regenerate there and will produce the liver of uh, approx uh, appropriate size of full size in a few months. And the part of liver that was removed from the donor will also get regenerated by the process that we have already studied. But we also studied another line of defense in earlier in this lecture and that is that some cells in the liver do have the ability that acts at the second line of regenerative ability. So if hepatocytes are unable to regenerate the liver sufficiently within a certain amount of time then the oval cells we talked about these cells at progenitor cells. These oval cells divide to form new hepatocytes, and then the oval cells are uh, what oval cells are, and they are small progenitor cell population that can produce hepatocyte and the bile duct cells. So they appear to be kept in reserve and they are used only after the hepatocytes have attempted to heal the liver. They are unable to heal the liver, then these cells will come to field and will perform their action of producing hepat new hepatocytes and those new hepatocytes will then form more and more new hepatocytes to compensate for the loss. This was all about the compensatory regeneration in mammalian liver or in human livers. So I hope that this lecture uh, proved helpful to you and it uh, was found by you to be of appreciable quality. So if it is so then please like this video to share your opinion in the comment section and do not forget to subscribe and turn the notifications on.